Sulaim Imran, chapter number three, verse number 105 says that as for those who divide, who make divisions in the religion and dispute amongst themselves, these are the people who shall get the torment of hellfire. Allah says in the next verse that those who divide the religion and dispute amongst themselves, these are the people that shall attain the torment of hellfire. Ya Allah is talking about full-time dais, they shall receive the highest level of Jannah, as, and those people who divide the religion and differ and dispute among themselves, these are the people that will go to Jahannam, the hellfire. Allah says in the Quran in Surah Shura, chapter number 42, verse number 13, that Allah has ordained for you to implement the deen as he had ordained to Prophet Nuh alayhi salam and the same which he revealed to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam and the same deen which he ordained to Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam and make not divisions in your deen establish your deen and divide make no division in them here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about he is giving the example and telling you to follow the deen the same deen he gave to one of the first messengers of Islam talking about Nuh alayhi salam and then Allah gives the example the same deen which he gave to the last and final messenger of Islam that is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam and then he gives the examples of the other messengers that came between Talking about Ibrahim alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam and Isa alayhi salam. Here Allah says, He has asked you to establish the deen, the same deen which He gave to the messengers and make not divisions in them. From all these verses of the Quran we come to know that making divisions in your deen is prohibited. It is taking you towards the hellfire. And Allah mentions in another verse, in Surah Anam, Allah says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 159, that anyone who divides his religion and makes sects in the religion, O oh Prophet, you have nothing to do with him. Allah will look after his affairs and Allah will tell him the truth in the end. Here Allah is telling that O oh Prophet, if anyone makes divisions in the deen of Islam and makes sects in the religion of Islam, O oh Prophet, you have nothing to do with him. Allah will look after his affairs and Allah will tell him the truth in the end. So from all these verses of the Quran, it is very explicit that making divisions in the religion of Islam or dividing Islam into sects is prohibited. It is haram and it will take you nowhere but to hellfire. But today we find that a Muslim ummah is in a very bad state. And we find very often that many of the Muslims, they are criticizing one another. We find Many dais speaking other, speaking against other dais. We have many ulma speaking against another ulma. We have Muslims calling each other with bad names. We also have some Muslims calling each other as kafir. No, Billah. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said. That if any Muslim calls a person a kafir and if kufr is not in him, it comes back to him. That means if a Muslim calls another person a kafir and that person happens to be a Muslim and there's no sign of kufr in him, then the person 
the Muslim who calls another Muslim a kafir becomes a kafir. Therefore, it is very dangerous and it is a very delicate issue. Takfir, calling one another kafir, is very common. It has increased in the Muslim ummah. The tolerance has reduced. It is only Allah and His Messenger who can say who is a kafir. When someone says the shahada, he says he is a Muslim, but yet the other Muslims say that he is a kafir, who are we to judge? It is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger who are the best to judge. Therefore, until it is not very explicit from the Quran and the Sunnah, it is forbidden to call any other human being, any other person who says he is a Muslim as a kafir. And when we read the Thira of the Sahabas, and we find that how they behaved amongst themselves, there were differences of opinion, there were differences, difference of opinion amongst the Sahabas, but we never found that they fought with each other or they called each other with ill names or they called each other kafir. Differences are bound to be there. And we have many examples. I'll give you one very important example. That in the fifth Hijri, after the battle of Azab, we know Archangel Gabriel, he told Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that to attack Banu Qurayda. And Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he called the Sahabas and he told them that let not any of you pray Asar except in Banu Qurayda. Now this statement of the Prophet, which he told to his companions, that let not any of you pray Asar except in Bani Qurayda, can be understood in two ways. One understanding is that irrespective of what happens, the Sahabas should pray in pray Asar in Bani Qurayda even if they reach after sunset. But they should pray nowhere else but in Banu Qurayda. The other understanding of the commander of the Prophet is that the Prophet wanted the Sahabas to reach early before Maghrib. Before Asr or latest before Maghrib. So that they could pray Asr in Banu Qurayda. Two different ways to look at it. And we come to know from the Hadith that the second ruling is correct. Because never will the Prophet tell anyone that to delay your Asr because praying is a farad in Islam on time. But the Sahabas, they had two understanding. One Sahaba, one group of Sahaba, who agreed with the first opinion, they said, no, Prophet said that we have to pray in Banu Qurayda, even though it is sunset, sun, it is close to sunset, we will not pray anyway, but we will pray after we reach Banu Qurayda. The other group of Sahaba who believed in the second opinion, who thought, no, Prophet wanted us to reach Banu Qurayda before Maghrib and pray Asar there, but now we are delayed. So better we pray on time and we reach Banu Qurayda as it is reaching late. Now these two groups of Sahabas, they differed. But when they differed, they did not fight. They did not say that the one group is wrong, you doing haram. They differed. But yet, they were cordial to one another. Later on, they went to the Prophet and they told that our two groups, we understood you in two different ways. Which of us is correct? Though we know what the Prophet meant was because the Sahabas, he wanted the Sahabas to reach early in Banu Qurayda. So what he meant was that you go early and pray Asar there. The second ruling is more correct. But what did the Prophet do? Prophet asked the first group. What did you understand by my commandment? So the first group said, we understood, Ya Rasulullah, that you wanted us to read Asar, pray Asar in Banu Qurayda, even if the sun sets, even if Maghrib is there, irrespective whether we reach early or late, you commanded us to pray Asar in Banu Qurayda. 
and that was the commander of the prophet what they understood literally meant that so the prophet said if you understood this way that I commanded you not to pray anywhere else but Banu Qurayda you have done right the prophet asked the second group what did you understand by my commandment the second group said we understood by a commandment that you wanted us to reach Banu Qurayda before Maghrib but we were delayed that was what a commandment we were delayed because of other things that came in between but that does not mean that we delay our asr that's the reason we prayed asr before we reached Banu Qurayda and we reached Banu Qurayda after Maghrib the prophet said if this is what you understood by my commandment even you are right so here we come to know the hikmah of the prophet that because Allah says Atiullah Ati Rasul obey Allah and obey the messenger both group of sahabas they obeyed the messenger according to their understanding none of the sahaba disobeyed the prophet the understanding differed so here we come to know though what the prophet meant was one thing they understood in two different ways the prophet said both the group of sahabas were correct there we did not find that the sahabas fought with one another like that there are many occasions in which the sahabas differed but none of the sahabas disobeyed the messenger purposefully that these duats who are full-time dais they are doing for the there should be a group of duats in the other verse in the other surah where Allah talks about every muslim should at least be a part-time dai is surah al-asr chapter number 103 verse number one to three where Allah says wal asr innal fi khusr illa ladhina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haqqa tawasaw bil sabr 